okay so I'm starting to strip down and uh, remove the old recycle RO system so I might keep this for use on a grow on system or something like that because that could work out quite well keeping nitrates down and uh, make a smaller system for it you know anything up to about a thousand gallons it easily handle um, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm cleaning all these uh, membranes because these will be biologically active because they've had pond water going through them they'll have bacteria in there as well so to sterilize these membranes what I've done is um, I've done this before as well if I'm going to leave the membranes um, turn them off for any period of time like if I'm treating for flutes they might be off for a few weeks or something like that what I'll do is I'll sterilize them otherwise because of the bacteria that you get in a, in a live uh, membrane because it's connected to a pond. Um, I kill all that off first by uh, putting the input feed there that runs to the pump into a bucket of uh, warm water at about uh, whatever it comes out of the tap out about 50 degrees and then I'll take the output from the product and the output from the waste put them both down into the bucket and drop about four uh, Berkon Aquatic tablets in there and that then uh, run that through the membrane for an hour or so, turn it off, leave it sit for about three or four hours then run it for another hour and then run some uh, clean water through it to uh, flush them all through and that will kill off any bacteria that are sitting in all the membranes because if you just turn them off and leave them they can go quite bad and you'll end up with um, bad bacteria growing in there producing hydrogen sulfide and things like that so sterilize them first and then put them out um, I haven't really had any problems with them when I've done that um, sterilize them will it shorten the life of the membranes yeah probably will a bit it'll oxidize them a little bit same as if you'd left a little bit of um, chlorine through there but um, yeah they're not going to last for five years but then they don't when you're running them on a live pond anyway uh, and they've always worked fine after I've used them and using Vercon instead of some of the more aggressive um, membrane cleaning chemicals that you've got uh, that are harder to get um, it's going to be safe if, if a tiny little trace goes back in the pond which it won't do anyway so I've rinsed them out quite well well that's running there at the moment pumping that round to waste, got the, uh, the feed valve open quite away so that it's pumping those through. And that's just running that, uh, sterilising those membranes out for me and then I'll clean it all through, run it through fuel and then I'll put that away and might keep that for a, keep it as another system, another recycle RO system for a grow on tank or something like that. So I've took the board out and stripped all the old components off it, the uh, 150 gallon a day membranes and some of that pipe work. The rest of it I'll leave there because that's going to stay pretty much as it is. One of the advantages of using a painted wooden board is you can fill in all the holes, give it a quick sand down and repaint it when you're rejigging it. You don't need to buy a new board because you put loads of screw holes in it. That's the board ready to be made up. I'll give that a sand and a paint and then I'll start building it all back up again. Okay, so I'm rebuilding this recycle RO setup with some 300 gallon a day membranes. Um, these houses that I'm using here have got uh, 1 8 tapped connections here and another other type where they just slot in and held in place by a retaining clip and the reason for that is those type of connections only have a, a quarter inch tap in here the the elbow that goes in to it is only a quarter inch now the problem with that is there's a big difference between a 1 8 BSP tap the bore on that and a, and a quarter inch pipe so if you have a look here this fit in here has got a 1 8 if I get that in focus, a 1 8 bore on a 1 8 thread and that 
is a quarter inch pipe and the bore on the quarter inch pipe and you see there's a very big difference in the amount of water that you can get down a 1 8 BSP fitting and a 1 quarter inch pipe. So that's why you need to get housings with a 1 8 tap rather than one that connects to a quarter inch pipe because that provides a lot of restriction uh, on the water going through there and can reduce the amount of water that your membranes are going to produce. Now, ideally you'd have a quarter inch connection coming out but those housings generally aren't used over here, they're used in the States. Um, these are 3012 housings I think. Yeah. These are 3012 and there's a slightly different number, I think it's 3016 for the housings that are used in America and they use quarter inch tappings on one end and 3 8 on the inlet. Um, but these are all 1 8 and that's virtually all you can get over here. Um, these elbows I got from uh, AliExpress because these fittings are about £3 each over here and you need 1, 2, 3, 4, you need about 12 of them which can add up to about 30, 40 quid. But you buy these on AliExpress and they're like 10 pence each which is just ridiculously cheap. So that's these connections on here, 1 8 going to 3 8 bore pipe, which will be similar. So a 1 8 bore fitting is quite similar to the bore on a 3 8 pipe, so you don't get very much restriction going through there. And that's the biggest thing got to watch when building these systems up is our own membranes are only designed to be run as single items so when you're banking four up together you have to look at the bore of the pipes that you're connecting them with to get the a decent flow rate through them so what i've done with the first housing these housings come with one eighth bsp threads there and on the inlet side are quarter inch BSP, which is uh, a reasonable size, which will give the correct bore for a 3 8 pipe. Um, but to get a better flow rate through, what I've done with this house in here is that would have come with a quarter inch uh, tap in. And I'm, because there's a lot of meat around this, the, the, the plastic here is quite thick. I've been able to drill that out and use this 3 8 tap. So I'll drill that out and you have to do it very carefully because it's easy to strip threads, threads when you're tapping into plastic. So I've drilled that out, tapped that out with the 3 8 tap and then drilled the internal bore out of that pipe. To the same size as a piece of 12 mil so that's a larger bore so I get less restriction on the first membrane that it goes through. So I'll put this together, stack these up, they'll go onto those clips uh, and then I'll put the membranes into the housings. Showing lots of times this but to get these housings to fit together easy so these rubbers don't catch where they're pushing into the plastic housing and around these parts here on these rubber seals there I put a little bit of silicon lubricant grease it's RAS um, protected it's for um, potable water and things like that with a RAS code there and uh, what this does rather than Vaseline. Vaseline will work and it will provide some lubrication on there but it, Vaseline is a petroleum based product so eventually over time it will degrade rubber whereas silicon grease is the proper stuff for putting onto 
rubber seals, so a little, very little wipe, only a slight smear around the, around the edge, very little at all. Literally hardly anything on your thing, just a little smear, and that just provides enough lubrication for it to go in there without damaging the O-rings, and the same around the outside seal. You need very little on it, just enough to make it slightly shiny, and that's easily enough to provide a bit of slip to get it to go into the housing easily. I'll do that, set these four up and then show you where I'm going with the next bit. straightforward connecting these up with some uh, 3 8 LL DPE pipe and 3 8 John Guest fittings. Uh, you can get these slightly cheaper in the white fitting, same as they got for the RO there. But if you look around online, there's plenty of uh, uh, these fittings coming up from private sellers who are working in beer line and that. Quite cheap, you can pick them up new, not used, for about a pound a piece. I think I bought the tees, the the elbows and all the fittings I need uh, normally you get a, a bag of 10 for about a tenner so a pound a piece they work out cheaper than buying the other fittings either that or order these white fittings from AliExpress and they work out a lot cheaper than buying them in the UK these fittings that I've got here and on the ends um, to go to 3 8 pipe rather than um, one quarter inch were 10 pence each from AliExpress uh, so I've got 10 for about a quid plus £1.60 postage which works out a bit cheaper than £40. So I'll start connecting this all up and then come back and show you once the uh, pipe work's done. Okay so there's the housings all connected up. Uh, I've used the John Guest Acetal fittings to connect them. Um, the clip locks Collet locks I've got here I bought from AliExpress because they were like I think it was about a quid fifty for a bag of a hundred rather than the extortionate price they charge over here for them. Just need to get that board settled back in the uh, filter house and then I'll look at connecting the motor up which will be housed separately to these underneath with a pipe feeding up and into the first housing. And then I'll show you how I'm going to connect up the feed to the pre-filters. 